Thanks for watching Community Update for Friday, August 28th. I'm Steve Erickson. The city of Coon Rapids will give out more than $1 million in grants to small businesses in the area. Many have been hit hard by the pandemic and are struggling to stay afloat. CTN's Jennifer Anderson met with some local businesses to see how they're surviving. When you are shut down to nothing, uh, it dwindles pretty fast. Cheers Pablo is usually a place that lifts spirits. Owner Deb Mogelson is trying to hang on to that, but COVID-19 is a weight that is hard to lift. I am a positive person. I am expecting it to get better, but um, it has been very difficult. I cry every day. I cry every day because the, the emotions, the stress of it all, it's overwhelming sometimes. The studio was forced to close in the spring and since reopening still hasn't reached even 30% of its usual capacity. It's not looking good. It's really not. Um, I'm four or five months behind on my rent. I've stopped with some of my utilities. Uh, it's been very difficult, very difficult. It's very exhausting. It's straining. It's coming to work every day and not knowing what to expect, what how clients are going to feel. Stacy Smith is relieved some customers are slowly returning, but she and other self-employed hairstylists at salons by JC say that recovery is a long way off. Some have left. They can't afford it. Some are struggling to stay here. So we got shut down with no warning and no funds. Never in my life have I been told I can't go to work and you can't make a living. So that's a hard one to swallow when you're self-employed as a hairstylist. <laughs> A new grant program in Coon Rapids could offer some relief. Businesses in the city with 100 or fewer employees that can show the pandemic has hurt their bottom line can apply to receive 15 to $30,000 to help pay for things like rent, utilities and payroll. It's really our intent to fund as many of these businesses as possible. Coon Rapids has set aside $1.6 million for the program. The grants will be funded from money the city received as part of the CARES Act, the federal government's COVID relief package. While it's been a challenging time for local government, it's been an especially challenging time for small businesses. So it was very important for us to use a good portion of, of those funds uh, to go back into the community and to assist small businesses with uh, uh, kind of the extreme circumstances they've been dealing with. Pay my rent, <laughs> pay my utilities. Deb Mogelson is already gathering her paperwork so she can apply for a relief grant September 1st. People come in and say, don't close, don't close, because they really enjoy it. So um, I'm just trying to keep it together. For Community Update, I'm Jennifer Anderson. The city must spend the money by November 15th and has partnered with the Central Minnesota Development Company to administer the grants. To be eligible, a business must have a bricks and mortar location in Coon Rapids owned by a permanent Minnesota resident in good standing with the state, current on property taxes, and able to demonstrate financial hardship due to the pandemic. The application process is open online from September 1st through the 18th at coonrapidsmn.gov slash business grants. The candidates running for Coon Rapids City Council took part in a question and answer session this week. City Council's chief responsibility is to set strategies for the city. What strategic initiatives would you push for? The candidate forum hosted by the local chapter of the League of Women Voters took place in the city council chambers on Monday night. Eight candidates running for four different seats took turns answering questions from the moderator. Unlike years past, there was no audience participation due to the pandemic. You can catch the candidate forum in its entirety on our CTN government channel in the coming weeks. Dozens of Anoka Hennepin teachers rallied before Monday night's school board meeting, demanding more of a voice in the discussions surrounding back to school plans this fall. This as the school board voted on a timeline to bring students back to the classroom. CTN Steve Antis has details. We are standing here in unity today for our students and our parents, our communities. Nearly 200 teachers stood socially distant around the block of the Sandberg Education Center. They held up signs voicing their concerns. Teachers want to teach. We want to be face to face with students. We just want to do it safely. The teachers' rally was held just before the school board met to unveil the district's back-to-school plan. 
At the start of the meeting, the president of the District 11 Teachers Union addressed the board. We need a consistent message, whether that's about safety, ventilation, teacher workloads, child care opportunities, work assignments, and more. The meeting lasted more than five hours, during which Superintendent David Law and his staff laid out Anoka Hennepin's plans for hybrid and distance learning for each grade. Starting September 8th, schools will coordinate orientation activities for students in grades K through 12. Then on September 15th, instruction starts for all students. Elementary schools will start in the hybrid format, while middle and high schools will start with distance learning. Then on September 28th, middle and high schools will move into hybrid learning. Our leadership team has spent hundreds of hours ensuring we're doing everything above and beyond what's required to guarantee the safety of our students and staff in our school buildings. For teachers, there are questions still unanswered in a summer unlike any other. The only way to get through this is together. In Anoka, Steve Antis reporting for Community Update. To date, District 11 has received nearly 300 requests for accommodation in the workplace from employees who have a health condition or a family member with one. Typically, the accommodation is to work remotely. The Inno Catapin School District welcomed more than 200 new teachers to the district this week. On Tuesday, a drive through parade was held at each of the five high schools, including Coon Rapids. New teacher orientation is usually a three-day event, but was reduced to just one day this year. We have an update now on a story we brought you back in March involving a 1,000 square foot community mural at Anoka Ramsey Community College. The college posted these photos on Facebook Thursday night showing off the finished product. Dozens of people had a hand in creating the masterpiece. The campus community mural, My Story, Your Story, Our Story, was completed and installed this summer. It's located in the Business Nursing Building. Anoka Ramsey Community College received a $56,000 grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board to fund the project. Pretty cool. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here again next week.